look at the dialysis machine itself, how it works, and what the situation is with phosphorus. Now, to help us understand this better, we're very happy to have with us Dr. Michael Fisher. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us, Doctor. My pleasure. So, this machine, how does it work? Well, it looks complex, but it's a very, really, basically a very simple machine. This is the pump right here, and the blood is pumped literally through the artificial kidney. And the artificial kidney really is simply this, this simple structure, which is really um, hundreds of thousands of hollow fibers. We have a pump. The pump uh, pumps the blood from the patient's arm. The, f the blood goes through these hollow fibers. At the same time, we pump dialysate fluid, which represents our normal plasma with the electrolyte content. And that then acts to pull uh, molecules such as potassium and get rid of the waste products. Okay. Now, the other, other very important part of this is that uh, we also have to get rid of extra fluid because um, when people's kidneys aren't functioning, they obviously don't make urine, and at some point they, they may make zero urine. So if they drink a quart of fluid a day, it has no place to go. And unfortunately, a lot of patients who are on dialysis drink more than that, and therefore they get what we call fluid overloaded, and that can be life-threatening and raises their blood pressure. It can go in their lungs and, and be obviously pretty detrimental to their health. So the other part of this process is that as the blood is pumped through these hollow fibers, we're able to change the pressure um, through which the, you know, the blood is flowing through them. We change the pressure and make it more negative on the outflow side of the, of the hollow fibers. And by doing that, it's like applying a clamp, and it increases what we call ultrafiltration of water through these hollow fibers into the dialysate. And to actually uh, make this more um, possible, we add glucose to the dialysate bath. And glucose is osmotically active. So the glucose literally pulls water from the blood across that semi-permeable membrane, which makes up the hollow fiber. And that water gets into the dialysate and is discarded the same way as the potassium was discarded. And that's the basic principle of how dialysis works. You've mentioned a lot about potassium being pulled out of the blood. Uh, today we're concentrating on phosphorus. Can you tell me how well this works with phosphorus? Well, unfortunately, um, the machine uh, or the artificial kidney is very efficient in removing most of the waste products. But sadly, it's not very effective in removing phosphorus. Hmm. And this is one of the uh, great problems that dialysis patients face. And this is one of the really shortcomings uh, it's just not an effective way to remove phosphorus. Mm -hmm. uh, what research, if any, are you aware of that's being conducted to help with this phosphorus situation? Well, I know there's a lot of research. People are trying to find a membrane that's permeable to phosphorus, which will pull phosphorus out of the blood. But to date, there really is nothing that I'm aware of that's on the horizon. Um, if, if it would come along, I think, I'm not sure it would win a Nobel Prize, but it would certainly be considered as a, it's a crucial issue and it's, uh, it's not effective uh, as of yet. Well, since unfortunately the machine is rather ineffective at removing phosphorus, isn't that why it's so important for the patient to take charge of this phosphorus situation with their food intake? Well, it's, it's of paramount importance that the patient take responsibility uh, for, for maintaining a normal uh, calcium phosphorus balance. And uh, it's really a partnership between the patient, the physician, the nurse, the dietitian, the family, to um, make sure that there is an understanding of the why, why this is so critical. And then, of course, um, to help the patient become really proactive in eating a diet which is relatively low in phosphorus and uh, using the medications we have which bind the phosphorus in the uh, gut and actually take the phosphorus out uh, you know, in the stool during a normal bowel movement. So phosphorus is controllable through your diet and through the binders? It's very controllable. So what benefits are there to the patient when they take care of their phosphorus? It's really theoretically possible with, um, with a really proactive approach that we can prevent the bone disease, the heart problems, the calcifications, all of those life-threatening problems which make the patient uh, at risk. And um, one thing I didn't mention, that severe itching. Oh, really? Yeah, it's associated with uh, an abnormality in calcium phosphorus balance, and that leads to a tremendous amount of discomfort for the patient. So basically, if the patient takes control, 
the patient has uh, some control over their destiny. Oh, and an added benefit is that you don't have to say words like secondary pyridopathepicidinism. <laughs> okay. But in spite of that, it is a remarkable machine and saving many, many lives and extending many lives much further than they would without it, of course. There's no doubt about that. And uh, we can't thank you enough for your expertise. You seem to know a little bit about this and appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fisher.